Hello. In this problem, problem, we are told that a crate, which is eight kilograms, is pulled up five meters. So from here to here. up a 30 degree uh, incline by a rope angled 18 degrees above the incline. So we have mass eight kilograms. Uh, this is the angle with the, that is parallel to the, uh, to the incline. And so the tension is gonna be at an 80 degree angle from there. Okay. So the tension in the rope is 120 Newtons. The crates coefficient of kinetic friction on the incline is 0 0.25. How much work is done by tension, by gravity, and by the normal force? That is part A. Tension, gravity, normal force. What is the increase in thermal energy of the crate and incline? That's part B. The change in the thermal energy. All right, so. First things first, we draw our free body diagram. So we have gravity acting down with a 30 degree angle. And then we have the tension. Here the angle is a little exaggerated to make it easier. It's an 18 degree angle. Then we have the normal, which of course is at a 90 degree angle. And then we're going to have friction. Um, sorry, not static, kinetic friction. And this is not part of the free body diagram, so I'm gonna, but we need it to calculate the work. So I'm going to put it in here, the displacement. is in that direction. All right, so let's focus on the work part of it. Uh, the definition of work is integral of force times the displacement. Force is a vector, displacement is a vector, and it goes from you know, some final, some initial to some final displacement. In this case, the tension is constant uh, the force due to gravity is constant. The normal is constant. And so we can take the force out of the integral. We see have the dot product in here from S0 to S1 or X0 to X1. So the integral of dx is X evaluated from the initial to final, so zero to five meters. And so the displacement is going to be five meters. That is just delta X. There's still a dot product between them. And so The, if we're focusing on the tension, then this will be the tension, this will be the tension, and the definition of that product is magnitude of T, magnitude of delta X, cosine of the angle between tension and the displacement. 
and the angle between the tension and the displacement, since the displacement is in the same direction as the surface, is 18 degrees. So this is going to be cosine of 18 degrees. And we can just plug in the numbers in here. So the tension is 120 newtons. The displacement is uh, five meters. And the uh, cosine of 18 degrees is 0.951. or 11. So we multiply all of that stuff. And the answer is 570.6. So let's write the answers over here. So the work done by tension is 571, approximately joules. If we have Newtons times meters. All right, so good. So we can now calculate the work done by the weight in G, call it G. So over here is gonna be mass times G, G will be the vector over here, magnitude of mg. And then is the cosine of the angle between the weight and the displacement. And that angle, you have a 90 degree here. So it is 30 uh, plus this 190. So it, it's this angle, it's 120 degrees. All right, so. This will be the cosine of the angle between gravity and the displacement, which is 120. So it's cosine of 120. All right, so we can use our calculator. Cosine of 120 degrees is negative 0.5. So I guess we can plug in the numbers in here. It will be mass, let's see, eight kilograms times gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared then the displacement is the five meters and then cosine of 120 is minus 0 0.5. So that will be uh, negative 196 joules. So I can put it over here. Uh, negative. And it's negative because we're going to work against gravity because it's going up. Um, all right, so now the third one is just the normal force. So this will be normal force. Over here we have normal force. So this is the cosine of the angle between the normal force and the displacement. So by definition, the normal force is at a 90 degree angle with the horizontal. And the displacement in this case is completely horizontal. So the angle between the normal and the displacement is 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 degrees um, is zero. And so the work done by the normal is zero. Zero joules.
that was the answer to part A. So for part B, we're used to calculate the change in the thermal energy. And you know, this is code word for um, work done by friction, kinetic friction, but kinetic friction is the only, only one that can do work. So um, we can, so this is gonna be the work done by um, Fk, so mu k times the normal. Um, then time to displacement. And then uh, the angle between the cosine of theta, the angle between friction, force of friction and displacement. So that angle is 180 degrees. So um, cosine of 180, it's negative one. Well, cosine of 180 degrees, negative one. So let's keep the negative one in there. And the part that we don't know exactly what it is, is the normal, um, but we can get it from the free body diagram. So I'm gonna put it over here. Work of friction is um, mu k times the normal times the displacement. So we have some of forces in y is minus mg cosine of 30 degrees plus the normal. Mm, and then I need more space. So sum of forces in y um, minus mg cosine of 30 degrees plus the normal, plus the tension sine of uh, 18 degrees. All right, so this is equal to zero because it is not moving in X or Y. Okay, so this implies that the normal is equal to Mg cosine of 30 degrees minus the tension sine of 18 degrees. Then sum of forces in X is going to be minus uh, Fk uh, plus tension cosine of 18 degrees equals mass times acceleration in X. Although we don't actually care about this uh, equation, um, we just wanted to know what the normal is. So we can plug it, plug it into our um, equation for the work done by friction. So it's gonna be minus mu k, and then uh, I guess I can put the delta x over here, the displacement. This is gonna be mg cosine of 30 degrees minus t, sine of 18 degrees. 
So that is the work done by friction. Um, so this is gonna be minus 0 0.25 times five meters times eight kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Mm. Mg, um, cosine of 30 degrees. Um, square root of three over two, so 0 0.8066. And then minus, uh, the tension is 120 degree, uh, newtons times sine of 18 degrees is uh, 0.31. Well, 30, 90. Good. So, I get rid of this one. Uh, so I'm going to put it over here. So the work done by friction. Uh, so this part will be, well, let's do this one first. Minus 1.25, still meters. So have meter squared, kilogram, second squared. And here we have Newton's times meter, which is the same. So all of these are in joules. So negative 1.25. And then we have uh, 8 times 9.8 times 0.8066. So this one is 67.89 minus 120 times the sine uh, I've already had there, sine of 18. So minus 37.08 uh, too many figures. Um, so the answer is in joules. So 67 minus 37, that's 30. And then times um, 1.25. That is 38, so I'm just going to put it over here. Minus 38.51.5 joules. All right, this is almost the answer. We have a negative in there. And so we're being asked for the change in the thermal energy. So this is the work done uh, against friction, right? So uh, tension is pulling, pushing in one direction, um, I guess pulling and friction is gonna be pulling in the opposite direction. So you have to do work against friction. And so that work is negative. Um, but this work that is done, um, it's uh, energy. And so that is the change in the thermal energy of the whole system. So it does say that is the crate and the um, and the uh, the incline system. So we don't know. This is going to become heat. We don't know exactly how it is going to be distributed. You know, most likely both the crate and the the same amount of energy is going to go to the crate and to the incline. The incline seems to be more massive, so it's probably not going to heat up very much. Maybe the crate might heat up. Um, a little bit more, that will be the temperature. But the case is that the energy that was created you know, that by friction, the work done by friction becomes um, thermal energy. And so in that case, the, the sign doesn't matter. So the change in thermal energy is 39 joules. All right, thank you very much.